Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Britt, creator of This Style Shaker, your guide to cleaner, greener beauty, skincare, and beyond. Today I am reviewing my very first favorites video over here, which was in March of 2017. Hmm? I am wearing the same shirt in honor of that video because I happen to still love this shirt. As for the other favorites I mention, not many of them are still favorites. So if you wanna see a cringe-worthy <laughs> first favorites video with me and see what they were and what they are now for the same types of products and categories, then stick around and let's get into it. Oh, it was so cringy. It was so, but it was so cool to watch this. I really did not know what I wanted to film today. I wanted to do the typology review for you, but I haven't gotten the product yet. So instead, I was looking at old ideas for videos and this popped on my radar and I was like, okay, I'll look at it. So I did, and again, March 7th, 2017. If you like this concept, by the way, let me know by hitting that like button, take two seconds, it really helps me. It supports the channel, but it'd also be kind of cool to know if you like this format. So <laughs> let's just, let's take it back. Let's take it back to 2017 real quickly, give you some context here. Just started the channel, really, at that point. I had moved from San Francisco to Pacifica, which was just like, nature, nature land. I was basically living on top of a mountain. I had the view of the Pacific Ocean and I had a teeny tiny apartment where I could sit there and look at the ocean at and when it wasn't covered by fog. And I had really different opinions on what was clean and what wasn't. I'm not going to run the video and watch it with you at the same time. I'm just going to run through what my favorites are and take out some key points, tell you what I used to like and what I like now, if I still agree with my 2017 self or not. The link to this video and all the products that I mentioned will be below in the description. Crappy lighting, way too high volume of music, and I'm um, taking my 10 favorites this week and I'm gonna share Location them. aside, I was sitting on my couch and the products were just kind of piled up on the right. <laughs> still figuring it out, it was a small space, oh God. Put that aside and let's just talk about the products and see what I said back. Okay. Something I want to call out here too, when I start talking on the video from 2017, I mention readings for EWG and EWG and EWG, and I keep talking about the Environmental Working Group. My stance on that has completely changed. Also, a lot of brands and retailers now have incredibly informative product pages, so you can actually see way more about the ingredients, like Credo has that, some other people have that. The last thing I want to note here is I do not rely on EWG. It is not my gold standard anymore. My relationship with the EWG in my head, because there is not one in real life, it's non-existent, they've never replied to a DM, they've never replied to an email from me, and my, the relationship with them in my head is just like, I'll go over there and use you guys and use your resources, and I appreciate that and like what they're doing. I don't wanna get into the whole, like you have to pay to play to get that EWG approval. I've never received a response from them. That's kind of saying something though, cause I've dug into it and nobody said anything. So it's just very suspect to me. I don't really trust them anymore. I love the Think Dirty app. I don't wanna get on a soapbox here, but if you're worried about looking up ingredients and you can't find them on retailers' websites or brands' websites, then check out Think Dirty. They're a wonderful brand. They do respond to you if you have questions. The first product that I loved five years ago was from Rada Organics. Now this was a company that was doing really well on Amazon. It was skincare based. It was really inexpensive. I still can't figure out how they get to those price points. I don't get it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this brand. I liked this cream, but then I, it was one of the first creams I tried. It was their anti-aging skin cream. It's no longer available through them. Now the products that I lean on are from Maya Chia. I'm using their Gentle Retinol. We're seeing how that's going. I'm still in preliminary phases. And I've been using the Juice Beauty Antioxidant Moisturizer. I've been using this almost every day. I really like it. Is it my favorite? TBD, it's getting there. But I have a lot of other moisturizers that I've talked about on the channel still. So those are the ones that are in heavy rotation right now. Semi-favorites, they're coming into their favorite moment maybe, but the Rada Organics is just off my list completely. The next product that I talked about was from Zoya, and Zoya is still a brand that I love. I happen to have their, I think it's called Padma. I'm wearing that on my toes, and it's really cute. I don't wear the nudes colors as much anymore. Every now and then, if I don't want color on my nails, I'll do it, but I like to let my nails breathe. I don't like them to be covered in polish all the time. 
but still Zoya is great. They have incredible assortment of colors. Huge fan. That is a continued favorite. My shell. So I'm talking about my shell. <laughs> I'm like really cutesy on that. I guess I'm still kind of like, I don't know. It's like a time capsule really just watching it. My shell is still a great brand in my opinion. I happen to love a lot of their products, one of which is their sun shield. I still like it formula shifted. In skincare, their fruit enzyme scrub is something that I would still recommend. Actually, I just don't use it as much. It's a lower price point. It's definitely more approachable than some of the other things that I do use. Another low price point scrub that I've liked is from Evolve and that's the Radiant Scrub, I believe. Again, links, all of it will be below. And there's the resurfacing mask from Tata Harper, which is definitely up there in price point, but you're not going to have any scrubbing going on. So sensitive skin, you're not gonna break your skin that way. And then I also talked about the MyShell eye cream. I kind of liked it. I don't even know why I said that was my favorite. I kind of want to call 2017 Brittany. Why was that your favorite? Like you rarely, I mean, I used it, but I didn't keep using it after, I don't know. I, I don't know what was going on. The eye cream that I use now is not one that's a favorite. I don't have a favorite eye cream, to be honest with you. I have been using the Alpine eye cream. I have to use that sparingly. Something in there does kind of make my eyes water if I use a lot of it. If not, I'm perfectly fine. I don't know what's going on. But that's why I haven't really touted it over here, but I use that preventatively under the eye and then um, other than that, I don't have a favorite eye cream. I'm sorry, I just don't yet. This one, okay, face mask from the brand Exuviance and it was the face mask that you put on, it tightens on your skin and then you peel it off and it doesn't hurt when you peel it off. It's not one of those that are black and then you peel it and they can't get it off and all the TikToks or maybe that was Instagram. This is one of those masks that when you peel it off, your face is shiny and tight and we used to think that was good. It is not. It is not good. It was way too harsh for my face. My mom still sometimes uses it. I've gotten the sister-in-law to convert into something else because she was pregnant, so she was auditing. What I use now instead for a mask is what I already mentioned. So Evolve I'll use, Tata Harpa I'll use, Herbivore AHA I will use. You gotta be careful with that because it can irritate a little bit if you have super sensitive skin. Check with a doctor, check with a dermatologist. This is not meant to be medical advice. I'm just sharing my opinions with you. Those are some of the products that I would use instead and I, I do not use Exuvians anymore for my skin. No. And then I talk about my beginning experiences with Smile Direct retainers. I have a full video on that. It's actually my top viewed video in the entire history of my channel, so it has nothing to do with clean beauty. People wanted to know, did it work at the time? I just kind of caught the wave of that. It was very lucky. So yeah, I really liked Smile Direct. I, they had terrible customer service until the end when I got an incredible, incredible associate who kind of almost made it all turn around. And now I still use their retainers. So yes, I still use the retainer. I have gone to a dentist to check it out. And they're like, you're okay. I'll probably get a custom fitted retainer from my dentist for just forever going forward because I grind my teeth, but like we don't need to go into dental work, do we? So that will be a favorite that I agree with in 2021. Yep, still a favorite, still a favorite. Oh my God, we're halfway through and there's some real doozies. This is the Redken Max Blast Hairspray. This is really important because this hairspray totally broke me out. I don't, it didn't happen at first. It didn't happen at first. It was very subtle, right? It was like, you see a little red dot here, a little red dot here. And then I remember being on, I, like in my car or I was in a moving vehicle. I remember I swiped my chin. It was the end of the day and I just, just like grazed my chin. And all of a sudden feel this hot fire heat going on and I had contact dermatitis and I had such a terrible allergic reaction all of a sudden. It was like my skin was just waiting for it. It was really one of the additional catalysts for me to not just have Z's clean up, but really clean things up because my skin was pissed. And if it weren't for that hairspray, then I wouldn't have gone even further down the cleaner beauty and skincare and hair care rabbit hole. I've yet to find incredible hair care or hairspray that isn't just doused in stuff that irritates my skin. I've tried Innersense. I've tried the Josh Rose Brook, probably one of the first hairsprays, not the newer one. I think there's a newer one. 
I've just not been lucky with hairsprays. Um, so sometimes I will use something, just spray it on my palms and I'll just put it like just little pieces here and there and I won't have irritation, but that Redken, no, 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 no. We stay far away from that. It is not in the house. So next up, Jillian Michaels, six week, six pack. Ironically, I just started doing this again. I was going all over the place in this favorites review, which I love because I'm getting back into that. I talk about clean beauty, skincare, and beyond lifestyle products, which you know I'm starting to get back into if you're a subscriber. Thank you for that. And Jillian Michaels six week six pack. I, I'm not like a Jillian Michaels diehard fan or anything, but I don't dislike Jillian Michaels and her workouts. When I look at some of the fitness influencers and even not, even just the fitness programs out there, they all kind of take the same moves and they just do them in a different sequence. I'm generalizing, but a lot of the ones I've found have done that. I only did level one and I would only do half of level one, which sounds like a total cop out, but it is not. It's plenty of hit for me, H-I-I-T workout, it's 20 minutes, it does the trick, and I see results instantly. So I still love it, and ironically, again, I just got back into it. So I'm starting to incorporate that just a few times a week just to kind of like tighten up. Another favorite from 2017, well, I kind of talk about my comparison between four tinted moisturizers. Um, I mention a few of them on the video. One is from Kiehl's no longer a favorite. Bare Minerals, I mentioned that that broke me out. Oh, it was Complexion Rescue, the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue. That is how I discovered that my skin does not tolerate dimethicone because no matter where I put it, there's just little red bumps that would just populate. That's really cute. I talked about the Jane Iredale Dream Tint there too, and I no longer like the Jane Iredale Dream Tint. I find it to settle funny on my face. It gathers. It just doesn't give a smooth melting in kind of finish that I like. Tinted moisturizers nowadays, some of my favorites I talk about. I've done a lot of favorites. I actually have a full tinted moisturizers roundup if you want to see it, tinted SPF. Sorry, I had to close the window because the sun just starts leaking in. It's crazy. I'm very grateful for the sun, but... One of these days I'll get a professional studio, one of these days. Some of the tinted moisturizers that I'm liking right now, the Say Slip Tint is one of my favorites. It's a little dewier, there is SPF in it, it's kind of fun. Suntegrity Impeccable Skin, when I want a little bit more coverage, I love that product still. I already talked about the My Shell, that's a tinted SPF. And I'm trying the new Typology Serum Tint, Tinted Serum. So that's kind of getting there, we'll see. I'll update you on that, but those are just a few. None of the tinted moisturizers I mentioned in 2017 am I a fan of really now. Definitely not the Bare Minerals one. Two more favorites that I mentioned back then. I was counting steps, I was doing 10,000 steps a day because I had left the city where there's just, you know, hills, the San Francisco hills. I mean, they're great for you, but exhausting. So I started out in Pacifica. I was right near the beach and I would go walk and I wanted to do the 10,000 steps a day. Also because I was very sedentary at the new office. It was a new job. I was sitting a lot more and I was getting really tired because I wasn't doing anything. So I gave myself a challenge where I was walking 10,000 steps a day. I don't know if that's a favorite. That was just something I liked doing back then. Um, again, it's really weird that I watched this video because I just re-upped my tracker. I had an Apple Watch and it was old and it just, the battery got whatever. So now I just purchased a Fitbit. I get compliments on this all the time because of the rose gold watch chain. People are like, oh my gosh, I love that. It's just, it's just, I love it. I feel the battery lasts so much longer, by the way. I'll give you a link to this Fitbit. I'm like veering and going on a tangent here, but I have been using this in conjunction with the new book that I'm reading, which is Atomic Habits by James Clear. In a nutshell, what I'm focusing on right now is this 1% shift that I can make every day to put myself on a trajectory. And I thought it was gonna be about my business, but I actually ended up making the focal point for my little experiment, my health, because a lot of what I do is work and I don't take care of my body as well as I would like to. Can you relate? Can't we all? Part of the 1% was just walking every morning, whether it's on my treadmill or outside, because I'm in a cute little neighborhood and you can walk all over the place. But there's so many, it's so hot and there are so many bugs, I'm just not adjusted to that. And I know I sound ridiculous, but it's just the truth. I brought the treadmill with me from California, so might as well use it. 
When it cools down, I will be outside and I've been tracking. You know, 10,000 steps is an arbitrary number. It was just one to look at. For me, the goal is just move more. So I've been taking little pieces of that. My 1% changes there are removing any obstacle from walking that day. So getting dressed earlier, which it was like, I was never doing that. I was just sitting in my sweatpants. Um, making a good playlist is a one. Creating an environment that makes me being able to walk in the morning automatic without having to think about it. No cognitive load, as James Clear would say. I am still kind of doing that, but in a very different way. And then finally, I talk about foundation sticks. I did a whole review for foundation sticks and they were not clean. It was Shiseido, it was NYX, it was Hourglass, Vapor was in there. Yeah, these were not clean products. And again, this was the very beginning when I was starting to dig into those ingredients lists and trying to figure them out myself. Nowadays, I don't really use foundation sticks often. I still like the Vapor foundation stick. It's very subtle. It's a very different kind of foundation stick. I liked it but I really tend to use concealers the way I used to use foundation sticks. So for instance, the Saint concealer, which is one of my favorites. I don't know why people aren't crazy about it, but I happen to love it. I use that as just quick touch-ups and coverage across the cheeks primarily. It's a multitasker for me, as well as the RMS on cover-up. You can use the Hint Duet Perfecting Concealer, but I've sort of made the switch from getting a specific category like a foundation stick, and I can just turn my concealers into multitaskers that do the same thing. Just because it says concealer doesn't mean you have to use it under your eyes. You guys already probably know that. I use multitaskers all over the place and I have definitely teased about doing a multitasker video. Every time I get ready to do it, everything's a multitasker. <laughs> so I haven't really figured out how I'm going to pull that round up together, but one day it'll happen. One day it'll happen. That's my review of my 2017 favorites. Some, like I said, just a couple I still loved. Uh, a lot of them have shifted. I mean, in five years, haven't your favorites shifted? If they haven't, good for you. Then you already figured it out, but I just have not figured it out. Plus, if you couldn't tell it, like trying new things, so they tend to shift. I mean, between 2017 and now, I've probably tried, at that point, I had probably tried maybe 20 products, maybe 30, maybe, maybe. That's a reach. And in 2021, I have hundreds, multiple hundred, probably close to a thousand product reviews under my belt. Um, it's kind of staggering what can happen in five, five years. And it all just started because I was nervous about what was inside my product. So and if you enjoyed this video again, don't forget to hit that like button, share your favorites of 2021 if you have any, or let me know, have you had like a complete shift from 2017 or five years ago? What was your life like? Like, think about your life then to now. It's crazy, isn't it? I love doing stuff like this. I'm very, I used to write myself letters to my future self. I used to do it all the time as a kid. You know what? I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do that. It's really cool to open them and see what you were thinking and then where you actually are. Usually it's a happy thing. Sometimes it's a little weird. I've digressed. All right, I'm going to go find some more favorites and <laughs> record some more videos for you. I'll see you right back here real soon. Until then.